Mr. Biden, why is it okay for Afghans to be on welfare but not black people? Well, black people have already gotten all the benefits they need in this country. They don't need any more benefits. The Afghans have gone through horrors in war. I mean, they've gone through 20 years of war with the Taliban. Well, you've put bl black Americans through war over 400 years of slavery and oppression. Don't you think we deserve compensation for that? And don't you think we deserve compensation for all of the voting we did for you in the 2020 election? I mean, we put you in office and you were supposed to do things for us. I don't have to do anything for you. I've got your vote already. I don't have to do anything for any, any black people. I mean, th th think about the suffering of the Afghans. The Afghans. The Afghans. The Afghans are coming. The Afghans are coming. <sighs> coming to paperback and e-readers. E-Steam Cancel Vacation. Elle's aspiring angel takes on a social justice social media mob looking to cancel her in this all-new E-Steam series adventure. Pre-order E-Steam Cancel Vacation on Amazon.com today. It looks like Afghan refugees are going to be the next group to be able to get tangibles from the Biden administration. The White House is now requesting a language change in order to allow Afghan refugees to collect welfare. Now, this is the latest slap in the face to your black American voters who went out and voted for Joe Biden in the 2020 election. Now, during the time of the 2020 election, black American voters were told that they needed to get their booties to the polls by the paternalistic Joe Biden because that was the only way we were going to defeat the evil orange man and end the deadly COVID-19 pandemic. That is what black voters were told, and because many black voters were so caught up in their emotions about the rhetoric of the evil orange man, they didn't really think critically about who they were voting for or what they were going to get in exchange for their vote. And because they voted on feelings and not agenda, they wound up putting Joe Biden in office and instead of giving black voters tangibles in exchange for their vote, what your Joe Biden did was express his contempt for black voters in a meeting with the Congressional Black Caucus and black leaders by telling them he couldn't do anything for them, even though all of these groups went out in force to go out here and give your Joe Biden the presidency and should have been placed at the top of the list for priority. But instead of giving black voters priority for tangibles, he pushed black voters all the way to the back of the line once more. And after he pushed black voters to the back of the line, he then pushed Asian Americans to the front of the line, easily passing an anti-Asian hate law that was designed to target black Americans the same black Americans who went out here and voted for Joe Biden in 2020 in a anti-Asian hate law that is basically Crime Bill 2.0 meant to target black Americans and put them in jail. Moreover, it is also designed to give money to many of these Asian organizations and allow them to profit at the, ta at the expense of the black tax dollar. So this is a double slap in the face that started with the Biden administration in 2021, and this was followed up by the crisis at the border where your illegal immigrants were put at the front of the line right behind the Asian and getting tangibles from your Joe Biden. Now, these illegal immigrants, they are allowed to get all sorts of tangibles as related to this country, but they, the whole thing is what's really, um, again, another slap in the face to black Americans who voted for Joe Biden is that these people are not even citizens and they are allowed to get to the front of the line and get tangibles from a government that they are not even citizens of. So that's another, again, insult to the black American voter who was told that they needed to go out here and get rid of the evil orange man, but the Joe Biden, who was supposed to be the good white man, who has just showing, again, his paternalism towards the black voter by talking down to them and saying that he was going to do nothing for them, 
but he can do something for a non-citizen and he can do something for a group that did not even vote for him in large numbers. And again, that is an insult to the black voter who sits there and just tolerates this type of insult because they just wanted to get rid of one racist, but they don't see how they're replacing them with another. Now, this is a major insult on, on of injury when you really think about it, because now the Afghan immigrant is being put further in front of the line, in front of the black American. Again, another group of people who are not even citizens of this country, and they're being put to the front of the line. And you're, now your White House is requesting that Congress make welfare benefits available to Afghan nationals who are paroled into the nation. And again, they will go out here and chastise a black American for being on welfare. They will talk about how a black American single mother is a bane to the country for being on welfare, but they are going to make provision for the Afghan to get welfare from the United States from black pack taxpayer dollars and it's supposed to be perfectly fine again you can give tangibles to the afghan immigrant who is not a citizen you can give tangibles to the illegal immigrant from the southern border who is not a citizen and you can do things for asian americans and hispanic americans but the black americans who went out in record numbers to go out here and be a part of the 80 million voters who voted for Joe Biden. They're told, no, you can't have any tangibles. And again, that is a middle finger directed at the black American voter that shows that those on the left do not value the black vote. And because they don't value the black vote, that is why many people, including myself, tried to tell your black Americans to stay their behinds home on November 3rd, 2020. Because the whole thing is, if a party like this one takes the black vote for granted, then they don't deserve to have the black vote. Because if you go out here and disrespect the largest constituency that voted for you and put you in, this is shows that you don't deserve those votes. And you, if you don't wanna go out here and respect the votes of the black American, that shows that you don't deserve the votes of the black American. So that is what black Americans don't didn't understand, and there's still many of them don't understand, because again, if America can go out here and spend three trillion on a war in Afghanistan and take care of Afghan refugees, then they can go out here and give tangibles to those black voters who went out here and put Joe Biden in office and they should dem more black people should demand to get their tangibles because only a weak people are going to sit there and allow others to jump in front of the line in front of them when we were supposed to be taken care of first and put at the front of the line i mean if we are the largest group who helped put other people in then we should be put first and we shouldn't be like what Joe Biden talking about oh, you need to talk to the Hispanic community. No, you talk to us first because we are the ones who put you in. And if we are the ones who put you in, then you need to put us first and you need to put all of these other people last. Because again, this is disrespectful to the black American voter, but many of these black American voters deserve what's happening to them because many of these black American voters they vote on feelings, not facts. And when you vote on feelings and not facts, what happens is you wind up being the big loser because your feelings will have you out here looking for approval from groups of people. And that's the main reason why many black people voted for Joe Biden, because they wanted to be approved by white people, not understanding that a vote is something you exchange for things on your agenda and when it comes down to candidates you pick the candidate because that's how you guarantee your agenda gets put through and black people were told not to vote for this man but they voted for him anyway and instead of black people being put to the front of the line as related to our needs 
we are being pushed to the back and your Afghan is being told that it's okay for them to have welfare and it's also going to be okay for them to come to your community and open up businesses and then be the latest group to springboard ahead of blacks and become a new middle class. And again, that should be an insult to all of the black voters out here that somebody, another group is going to come in and go out here and springboard themselves to become a middle class, eating off our $3.3 trillion in spending power with the support of the government. I mean, if you go out here and vote for this man and give him an, a presidency, then he should be giving you priority and he should be giving you tangibles because if it wasn't for them, it wasn't for black people, you wouldn't be where you are. And again, this is a disrespect directed at black voters but your black voter is the only person who has to be at fault because your black voter votes on feelings and not facts. And as they vote on feelings and not facts, they wind up being the big loser at the end of the day. And what's even scarier about the whole Afghan situation is that many of these Afghans are not being vetted because they're just being brought in and not, and even though they're not being checked, their backgrounds aren't being checked. So this may be a big disaster for the Biden administration, but it's an even bigger disaster for the black community because the black community voted for Joe Biden and they voted for a man who gave them nothing and put everybody be in front of black voters. And again, that's very disrespectful to the black voter. He's being put last when he keeps putting white people first, when he needs to, instead of putting white people first, he needs to put black agenda first and get make getting black tangibles the top priority. Now, this video is one that's not going to be monetized because, you know, YouTube doesn't like people talking critically about the left and their precious God. So I'm asking viewers to donate to the Cash App by clicking the link in the description box. So, and you can also pick up some of my books on Amazon.com. And that's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.